How's it going? Uh, so I wanted to get one last strategy video out before this year's AMC 10A. And I also wanted to share with you uh, quickly uh, a review that I got from one of my small notebook classes this last Sunday. I do have one more round of small notebook classes coming up this Sunday, the 5th of November. Uh, but this review, I asked people to share what they thought of the class. And I really liked this one. So I got permission from the father who actually sat in and, and watched over the lesson as well with his son. And uh, this was the review that they gave back. Um, I did blot out the names for privacy reasons. So it says, hi, James, we are overwhelmed in amazement. Best three hours spent on a Sunday. So much material concepts and advanced concepts, thought processes in all. It was awesome. We both sat through uh, the, the class. Thanks for letting me be part of it. And we are still in the process of combining our notes, almost 50 pages altogether, plus many screenshots. It will take a couple of days to reconcile. We ordered a set of small notebooks for the name, and he will be using it from here onwards for every new concept. So if you wanted an idea of how people thought of the class, there you go, that's the idea. Uh, in the spirit of that, I will also share one more time. These are the class times available for this coming Sunday. If you are domestic, that would be, you know, anybody on the Western Hemisphere, essentially. Uh, it is going to be Pacific times, 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. for AMC 12. And the other class is going to be 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. for AMC 10. Essentially, this represents 12, 12 years, 10 to 12 years of research of me and all the things that I found really interesting and noteworthy that you can make problems out of that are a little bit upgraded from the normal. There's also the first ever international class that I've had for this material. Uh, that is going to be Beijing time, 12 noon to 3 p.m. here on the Pacific West Coast. It'll be 9 p.m. to midnight for me. Uh, the Saturday night before, uh, the, the fourth for me. So if you're actually Pacific time zone and you wanted to stay up late, you'd be able to join that class as well. But it is made for the, the international participants. Uh, with that, I wanted to get to uh, the concept that I wanted to go over here. And this is actually a problem that I solved, uh, you know, back last year when the test first came out. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this into uh, tablet mode for my laptop. I have a two-in-one laptop. So uh, things that I want to ask, we need to be asking a question why. When you do a problem, you're kind of like a detective, and yet every case is solvable, conceivably, right? And it's going to depend a little bit on your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but at the same time, let's go through the clues that the item writers left behind for us to solve this problem. Now, even though I've already done this one on video, the solution that I came up with was actually not that great. Uh, you're also going to have to accept this about yourself. You're not going to find the most efficient path on every single problem. The goal is to find the most efficient path on as many problems as you can and live with the ones that you either have to skip or like me, found some convoluted solution that took a really long time and was not really that great, but it still represented survival. I survived on the problem. I did get it correct. So this is going to be a better explanation than what I came up with the night of the test when I did the test myself and then I filmed all of the stuff in order to share with you the next morning. Uh, I didn't really have a time to evaluate all of my solutions for the best efficiency. So I don't just go over the best solution on the channel. I go through my solution, or if I know I'm using someone else's solution, I will try to give a hat tip to those individuals whose solution I would use either off of AOPS or otherwise. So let's get a look at this problem 13 again for the second time. Let triangle ABC be scaling. First off, you're going to have to start drawing and don't think too much about what it looks like. Just create something. OK, we do have an angle bisector of an angle, and I typically like that angle to be at the top. What you don't want is anything uh, that would um, actually, you know what? Let's make this a little bit smaller. Anything that would be recognizable as you know something else like a right triangle or isosceles because it says it's scaling. So we'll go up like this. We'll come down here. And you've got this whatever, some triangle like this. You don't want, it looks almost isosceles, but it's enough off that we're okay. So you're gonna have A here and I'm gonna put B here and C here. So now he says point P lies on BC so that AP is an angle bisector of BAC. 
So I will come over here and I will draw what looks like an angle bisector approximately. Okay, and then we're gonna come back and now we're gonna see if that's an angle bisector, this equals this and point P is here. It then says the line through B perpendicular to AP. Okay, so you do that, it's perpendicular to AP here. Uh, intersects the line A through BC, uh, I'm sorry, through A parallel to BC. So you're gonna come way over here. You're gonna have a line parallel coming over here to meet it. Um, and where does it say they intersect? At point D, okay? So at point D, then what? Um, suppose BP equals two and PC equals three. So here's the things that you wanna ask. Let's talk about the detective aspect. You need to be asking three questions right now, primarily. One, why angle bisector? Why? We need to be answering this question. Two, why perpendicular? Three, why parallel? In other words, the part that's parallel, why is it parallel? The part that's perpendicular, why is it perpendicular? What are they trying to tell us with these things? All of these things represent ideas that they want you to use the majority of the time. Most of the time, the concepts that are presented in a problem are needed to solve it. Occasionally, you'll get extraneous information that really doesn't help solve the problem at all, but it is quite rare. Uh, either way, we still want to ask these questions and try to answer them. Typically, when you have angle bisector, the reason is angle bisector theorem. And that's the first place I would stop for any angle bisector problem. And then as second places, I might check if I can't find anything with that. You might go with, well, where do angle bisectors meet? They meet at an in center. Maybe they're going to have something with in radius and area equals in radius times semi-perimeter. All of that can come up. But your default, your number one, should be a pit stop at maybe it's angle bisector theorem. So we'll start with that. We're going to assume that maybe it is. And what I like to do right now, and this is a really important thing for you to do as well, is take a chance to reduce complexity. When you're looking at the drawing that we made, it's quite complicated. There's a lot going on. If I just want to look at angle bisector and potentially angle bisector theorem, then maybe I should just look at the original triangle ABC. So I'll draw another version of it over here. And we'll say this is A, B, and C. And we got this angle bisector and P and two and three. Now, if you're going to use angle bisector theorem, you're going to need variables for the other sides. So we're going to say X and Y for now. So we create X and Y because we don't know what they are. And we're just going to make an equation using this theorem. So many ways to use it. I'm just going to go two over X equals three over Y. I visualize it just like that. You can do it many other ways. I wouldn't spend too much time making the best choice. Just get something on paper. You can work from there. Okay, so now the next thing you want to say is, again, reduce complexity. Having two variables is kind of complicated. We'd like to only have one. So in that, in that same spirit, we're just going to cross multiply 2y equals 3x and immediately observe that if I divided by 2, y would equal 3 over 2 times x. Well, that tells me something. I really don't want fractions running around in my problem if I can avoid it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch course. I'm going to make this 2x, right? If I did that as 2x, then y would now be 3 over 2. I'll write it over here. y would equal 3 over 2 times 2x now instead. And the 2s would cancel, and this side would become 3x. Okay, great. So I think we may have kind of figured out, oh, I, I missed it up. It's supposed to be BAC up here. You get the idea though. So BAC, sorry about that. Okay, but you've got these 2X and this 3X here, which means the AC over here is 3X. We've kind of maybe answered this. We really don't know. Maybe there's more they want us to do with it, but it's a good chance we've gotten something actionable that we can work on. Generating the fact that AB and AC are in a two to three ratio, kind of beneficial. Let's look at, I would call it a significant conclusion. After you've reached it, move to the next question, detective. Why is it perpendicular? What are they trying to get us to see with that? Well, 
I'm not sure, but now that we know we have that, why don't I go ahead and mark other angles 90? And I go, oh, look, we've got angle side angle congruence. So not only is it 2x to 3x ratio, they're actually congruent, which means up to right here. And I kind of want labels now. I'll call that M and N for no reason. A, N must also be 2x. But since A, C is 3x, I'm going to come down here and place an x. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is erase some stuff. Uh, let's see if uh, Zoom has fixed their stuff. They had some issues with things erasing before. It looks like it might be fixed. Um, I'm going to erase all of that and get rid of that so that we have more space. Okay, so now have we answered the Y perpendicular? It looks like it to me. The fact that we got that so quick, that would probably be a good sign. That's what they wanted us to observe was the congruence of those. The next question is, why did they give us parallel lines at all? Most likely answer, something to do with similar triangles. Especially when you're doing triangles and you have parallel lines, there's similar triangles in there somewhere. You've got triangles in there with that feature. So I'm gonna go ahead, change colors here, and we're gonna say that we have this angle and this angle because they're alternate interior. We are also going to have this angle and this angle because they're alternate interior. And obviously you have these vertical angles right here. So that would mean that triangle A and D is similar to C and B. By the way, when you're making similarity ratios, don't make it from the picture. Good, good, good way to make a mistake right there. Make it from the words, the symbols. It will always be the first two letters over the first two letters, second two letters over second two letters, first and third over first and third. So we're going to have immediately just create. I don't usually think at this point for what ratio I want. What proportion do I want? Don't know, don't care. Make it on your paper and then you can decide quick. And if you're fast in the process, it's really not that much writing. So AN over CN equals ND over NB equals AD over CB. I haven't even read the question yet. This happens all the time too when you're solving. You don't always need to read the question to act. You can still ask questions about what they gave us and why, and you can take automatic steps. I would call going from the similarity statement to the generation of this proportional statement, I would call that an automatic step. It just happens instantaneously as a reaction. So now we go and look at what we want. What is AD? What is AD? Okay, well, AD is over here. That's one of the things that we have in our proportions, our ratios here. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and keep that. We'll call it X, though. And CB, do I know what that is? Hey, I do. It's five. How about that? Let's go to the other things. What do we know? Do we know AN? We do know AN. It's, well, I shouldn't have used X. We'll call it, uh, I don't know, V for value, okay? Uh, so I got X over here is Y. So 2X is what AN represents. And CN is then going to be this X. Hey, look at that. Those cancel out. That means I have a two to one ratio. That means V is 10. That means we're done and it's 10. It just falls apart at the end because we properly asked and answered the reasons for why these things are in the problem. So if you're stuck on a problem and you're trying to figure out, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Start asking why. OK, uh, that's all I've got for you in this video. If you'd like to sign up for the small notebook class, please feel free to reach out to me by email. It is not my normal class Zoom link if you're planning to join from one of my students. Uh, other than that, watch for the final advice video that will come out maybe Sunday, maybe Monday. I'll try and get it out this weekend if I can. But I work very long day on Saturday. And if I, my voice is scratched on Sunday, I probably won't film it then. We'll see what we can do, but be on the lookout for it. Other than that, I hope you are preparing well for this year's AMC 10 and 12. I will see you all in the next video.